Okay, welcome to another episode here. Today we're going to be talking about some biomechanics, which is what I actually study. So I'm just going to walk through a few PowerPoint slides about ankle joint power, and then I'm going to walk through some code to calculate a few common parameters that people pull out of these ankle joint power curves. And so while we walk, the ankle joint generates a lot of power, especially towards the end of the stance phase or the period of the gait cycle where the foot is on the ground. And so I have here just a traditional, very commonly seen ankle joint power curve. Uh, it starts at zero and ends at 100. And I have this split up um, or sampled so that it's 100% of the support phase while the foot is on the ground. And you can see this large spike in positive power near the end of the support phase. And this is the ankle joint plantar flexors, so your calf muscles generating a large amount of positive power. And that positive power helps propel the body's center of mass upward and forward during the gait cycle. And as you walk faster, you can see um, that the ankle joint power peak goes up, but it also spreads out a little bit. And so what this means is that the area underneath that curve or the amount of mechanical work that those plantar flexors are doing is going to increase. And these are uh, the speeds are 0 0.8 here in black. The blue is 1.2. The red is 1.6 and the green is 2.0 meters per second. Uh, peak ankle joint power and ankle joint mechanical positive work also increases as you walk uphill. And so here the black line is zero degrees or level ground. The blue line is plus five degrees and the red line is plus 10 degrees. And again, you can see these peaks go up and they also come out wider. And so the area under these curves, under the positive portions of these curves is going to increase, meaning more mechanical work being done by those ankle joint plantar flexors. Okay, generally, why do we care about the ankle? Well, uh, the ankle does a lot of work. And so if you split up per joint, ankle, knee, and hip, uh, if you split up the percentage uh, or their relative contributions to the total amount of work or the sum of all of their work, the ankle joint does close to 50% of, of the total amount of work being done during walking. And so it does a lot of the mechanical work, which is surprising because it's a relatively small muscle group. But the reason that we rely so heavily is because they have a very passive structure. They've got muscles, primarily the gastrox and the soleus, that are comprised of relatively short muscle fibers interacting with long tendon or elastic components. And of course, this is the Achilles tendon. And so if you can uh, minimize the amount of muscle displacement, you'll minimize the amount of work done by the muscle. And if you just let all of this this mechanical work be done by stretch and return of elastic energy by the Achilles tendon, then it's passive. It's metabolically very inexpensive to use the ankle joint so long as they're functioning properly. And then some of the clinical implications about why we care about the ankles that we see in many populations decreased ankle um, power. And so even with healthy aging, we tend to see a decrease in ankle joint power. Post-stroke on the paretic side, we definitely see a big decrease in power. Multiple sclerosis, we see this. And then below knee amputees, of course, if you have a bad prosthetic or an old, kind of an old school rigid prosthetic, you, know, uh, you basically lose all power production from the ankle, uh, the prosthetic ankle. Uh, and then there's some other obvious applications, so designing ankle joint exoskeletons to improve performance, targeting um, the ankle joint for athletic performance, and so on and so forth. And so this is why we care about the ankle. So I'm going to, um, this is why people calculate the things that I'm about to show you how to calculate. Okay, so let's switch from there over into MATLAB. And I have actually already generated a MATLAB struct that has hip, knee, and ankle joint power curves for a single support phase. And this is a very, very easy example. I'll show you when I plot the curve. It looks exactly like you see um, it, it's a very stereotypical ankle joint power curve. So we won't be doing a lot of troubleshooting as this is a very stereotypical power curve. And the things that we're going to calculate are relatively easy, but I figured, you know, a tutorial doesn't, doesn't hurt. And so I'm going to start the way I start all my codes and just do a quick clear all CLC. It would help if we actually had a script up and ready to go. Okay, so just in case we're starting from scratch here, we'll do this again. I'm going to go ahead and load uh, this file. Again, I did this 
here starting the video. Uh, it's joint powers example map. Go ahead and load this up so we can see what is going on here. Alright, so I loaded it in, and this is again just a MATLAB struct that has the subfields of each joint, and then within each joint we've got a single column that specifies uh, the ankle joint power for a single support phase. And we can go ahead and just plot the this powers, and then the subfield is ankle. So let's just go ahead and plot the ankle joint power to make sure it looks the way we expect it to. Yeah, perfect. So, you know, we see again, uh, as I was just explaining, we see some negative work here and then some uh, a large amount of positive work towards the end of the support phase. Now, you'll notice that this isn't zero to 100 percent. This is actually um, in frames. So we will have to take this into account when we start doing things like calculating mechanical work. So this is being sampled in frames, not time or percent. OK, so let's think about some of the things that we might want to pull from this. Uh, let's keep this plotted just so we can refer back to it. Things that are very commonly pulled out are peak positive power and positive work done at the ankle. So positive work is the area under all positive portions of this power curve. And then some other people are interested in how much negative work is being done and the relative contributions of negative and positive work. And so what we'll do is uh, we'll keep it relatively simple for this video. We'll find the peak positive, we'll find the peak negative, we'll find the positive work, We'll find the negative work, and then we'll find the net work, so the total amount of work, um, positive and negative, across the entire joint power curve. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with uh, positive uh, peak, positive power. This is a relatively simple one. Uh, if you know MATLAB, MATLAB's got a very simple function to find these peaks. So we'll say peak power is equal to max power powers.ankle. Let's run this, make sure it runs. <laughs> max is just finding the maximum value, 3.9. Uh, and then uh, if we scroll over that peak, 3.9. Yep, okay, so we found that. Pretty simple, right? Let's now find the peak negative power. Uh, you know, I called this peak power. Let's specify that it's positive power. Let's call this uh, peak negative or neg power. And instead of max, we're going to call min powers.ankle. This, by the way, is how you reference that uh, struct. You, you call the name of the struct, and then you call the subfield after a period, dot, dot subfield. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could subset even further in here. And actually, we're about to do that. So let's make sure that we found the right negative power with this, negative 1.64, it's down here, negative 1.649, yep, okay, so we grabbed that one. Now let's get into some of the more fun things, let's say positive work. So for positive work, there's a few options, right? One one way to do this would, to be, would be to go through and find and index everything that's positive. So, you know, you say something like if, you know, for the length of it, if if uh, the iteration is positive, then store it as a, an index of a positive and then find the area under all those positives. But there's actually a really simple, simpler way to index this, which would be to call on powers dot ankle. And you can vectorize this by just calling it again and saying uh, greater than zero. This will actually call within this all of these um, positive ones. And just to show you that that actually works, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I deleted it, powers.ankle, powers.ankle, greater than zero. Just to show you that this actually works, this will return all of the positive. And so there you have it. <laughs> There's our positive. And you'll see that the peak is still the same, 3.93. Okay, um, now we want to find the area under this. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a built-in MATLAB function called traps. This uses a trapezoidal method to, uh, to integrate the, the specified curve. And so traps. And we're going to go ahead and call this just pause work. 
Let's go ahead and run this and see what it gives us. Oh, it doesn't like that. Oh, it's because I got the plot in there. Come on now, Dan. Doesn't like the plot being in there. 35. Now you're looking at that and you're saying, okay, how is this thing 35? Shouldn't look right to you. And that is because you have to remember that when we're doing this, this is in frames. It's not in time. And most, and what we really want to do is, is report this relative to time. So what I need to do is up here, I need to go ahead and specify that the frame rate at which we were capturing data was 100 frames per second. And so we'll go ahead and do this. And then down here, we're going to divide by that frame rate. And there we have it. That should be 0.35 now. Yep, 355 or 3577. That looks better. And now for negative work, I bet you can already tell what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and give us give ourselves some space here. <clears throat> go for negative work, where powers dot ankle is less greater than zero, we're just going to switch to less than zero. And there you have it. Okay, so let's see what that gave us. Negative 0.2. That looks right. And then the last thing that we're going to grab is just the network. And so you could probably imagine what we're going to do here. We will say network. We'll go ahead and get rid of that. And instead of calling anything out here, we're actually just going to call in the whole thing. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And let's see what we get for network. So network should be positive if we are just remember back to the curve that we were seeing before. Uh, and it is. So if we were to go back up and plot it again. <coughs> yeah, you can see there's more positive work than negative work uh, being done. So we would expect that to be positive. And it is. So that's good. Okay. So the last thing that I want to show everyone is just to just to add a little bit of test coverage into this. Uh, we can do things like plot the peaks um, and, and view them, make sure they look good visually. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my peak algorithms. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out not only the value of the peak, but also <clears throat> the locations of them. And so we'll do that for both of these. Location, egg, peak. We're going to run these again. So now I have a location and the value. And then we will plot this to make sure it looks right. So we'll call figure. We're going to plot powers.ankle, and we'll make this, how about this, we'll make this look a little nicer as the final figure here. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to plot the, this, our actual power curve. I'm going to call hold on, and then I'm going to plot uh, our peak, we'll do peak negative first. So our x value for this is going to be the location of it along the x-axis. This is peak, uh, loc, negative, peak. And then the y is going to be the actual peak. So that was just peak, neg, power. And we're going to give this a red circle with marker size, uh, I think 8 usually looks pretty good. And we'll say uh, Marker face color is uh, red. And then we're going to do the same thing for our positive. I'll just copy and paste this. Change these accordingly. Peak, pause. And instead of red on this one, we'll give it green. How's that? Green for go, green for positive. OK, let's see how that looks. Oops. Go ahead and evaluate it. Hey, there we go. So we've got our power curve. We pulled out our peak. 
that's correct. We pulled out our peak positive, that's correct. And uh, yeah, uh, again, this is a very stereotypical ankle joint power curve, so it's hard to, to see any, any issues in this code. It seems relatively straightforward, but there are some cases, for example, when you start going up very steep hills where negative goes away almost completely, and so that will throw some trouble into your code if you're trying to index zeros. So one of the things that you could do to get around that, for example, is to say, uh, let's see, um, do a quick conditional is empty uh, powers. So we'll just check this before we actually do it. Uh, powers, powers dot ankle uh, less than zero and if it's not empty, so if if it were empty, we would get a logical of one or binary one. Um, and if we get a zero, that means that this isn't empty. That means that there are some negative values. And so that we don't end up just having an AN there, we'll say um, if it does come back empty, then reg work on this step will just be equal to zero. Uh, and you know, we should actually do the same thing up here. You know, peak negative power can't be positive. And so we'll just say if peak neg power is uh, greater than zero, then we will say peak neg power is equal to zero. And then in subsequent code, you just have to remember, you know, if you get a true zero here, then um, that means that there weren't any negatives. That doesn't mean that the value was actually zero. So, okay, well, there you have it. Let's run it one more time just to make sure it all actually runs properly. Nothing that we just added throws any issues into it. Yeah, it all runs. We've got our peaks identified correctly, it looks like. Uh, there's our locations, there's our negative work, our network, our peak negative power, peak positive power. Uh, oh, that was the peak power that I accidentally ran before I changed the name, and then our positive work. So. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Well, if you like that video, um, please like it, please share it, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be uploading a lot more frequently, so I'm hoping to get more content out to everybody. Some of it's going to be like this. Uh, this is what I study biomechanics, so I, I love writing code for this. And then some other stuff, uh, you know, I'm, I'm messing around with web app development um, and some a little bit of database stuff. So I might make some videos about that as well. Uh, if you want to learn more about me, check me out on Twitter, check me out on LinkedIn. You can find a lot of the code that I talk about in these videos already up on my GitHub. And so if you're interested, please, please feel free to, to reach out. Alrighty. Until next time, guys, keep coding.